Good morning. Uh, my name is Lucy Alp, and I will be the moderator for this class. Today is Thursday, June the 6th, 2024. Class, you have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, and certain other foreign countries, with students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, and Australia. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and gods many, but we now know that each lord must have a name, and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike lord and god, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source substance, limits, and bounds of everything, we have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, 
the self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan, and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning, may we begin with a prayer by Dr. Uh, Deborah Van Hook. Uh, we will have a song by Dr. Uh, Jackie McCain. Our scripture lesson. Uh, sorry, I failed to write it down. Um, but it is on the screen. Dr. Latoya Braggs, would you be able to read our scripture lesson this morning? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. It is Isaiah 57, 15, and Micah 5 and 2. All right. And our readers for today's session, we will be going over the panoramic vision pamphlet, will be Dr. Teresa Baker and Dr. Daddario Warren. I'm sorry, did I ask someone to do the prayer? Yes, yes Dr. Yes. Deborah Van Hook. Yes, thank you. I'm having a senior moment again. Thank you. Good morning, Heavenly Father Yahweh. 
thank you for this blessed day that you've purposed in the realm of eternity. Thank you for allowing us to see Pentecost with an understanding in our heart, in our mind, and know that you have humbled us and humbled our spirit and made us love you and be aware of your ever presence at all times. Father, we're grateful that you brought us through the night to bring us to a new day to see the resurrection of your son. And Father, we in all of us in our hearts and minds are truly grateful for all the blessings you continue to give us in the name of your only begotten son, Yahshua the Messiah. May we all say hallelujah. 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 Good day, brethren. Uh, John, after he received the vision in 1 John 5 and 20 says, and we know that the son of Yahweh is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and that we are in him that is true, even in his son, Yahshua the Messiah. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. I want to talk about how Yahweh is real. <clears throat> There are some things I may not know. There are some places I, I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing that Yahweh is real, for I can feel him deep within. Some folks may doubt. Yes, some folks may scorn. All can desert and leave me all alone. But as for me, I'll take Yah's part, for Yahweh is real, for I can feel him in my heart. Yes, Yahshua is real. He's real in my soul. Yahweh is real, for he has watched and made me whole. His love for me, just like Kirko, Yahweh is real, for I can feel him in my soul. I cannot tell just how you felt when Yahshua took took your sin all away. But since that day, yes, since that hour, Yahweh has been real, for I can feel his holy power. Yes, Yahshua is real. He's real in my soul. Yahweh is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me, just like her gold. Yahweh is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Hallelujah. He's real. Hallelujah. Um, I'll be reading uh, Isaiah, the 57th chapter, verse 15, and Micah, the 5th chapter, and verse 2, out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name versions of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer, 
the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. That's Isaiah, the 57th chapter, verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Micah 5 verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin has been from of old, even from the days of eternity. I have read Isaiah 57 and 15 and Micah 5 verse 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank everyone for their participation. And I will now turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's Lenore Allen from Brooklyn, New York. I just wanted to tell you that this sort of happened purely as a uh, not in my thought or ideas or anything else, but I was thinking about which one of the pamphlets do I want to look at. And then I was looking at understanding the vision and the revelation that Dr. Re Kinley received on June the 6th. And then I said, wow, it's June the 6th. And I took the scripture readings from the beginning of the pamphlet that says Isaiah 57 and 15 and Micah 5 and 2. And this uh, pamphlet, which can be found at Gates, G A T E S, class, C L A S S, that's one word, dot com. And you just heard the link for pamphlets. And you can see a number of our pamphlets. Not all the pamphlets are there, but many of the pamphlets are there. And you can read this one that is called Elohim, the Archetype, Original Pattern of the Universe panoramic vision excuse me lenore we are yes. back to having a black screen with the white bar across it no, again i don't understand that because i can see it clearly all right you see it now yes okay i don't know why it's working like that anyway it's called there's the scripture reading up here isaiah 57 and 15 mm -hmm. micah 5 and 2 and if you go down it says elohim the archetype original pattern of the universe panoramic vision and this is the back of the page and it says do you know Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua whom he hath sent uh so I just wanted to have us read that today is anybody ready to start reading sure do you want me to start with the uh Right here, an introduction to Elohim. Okay. An introduction to Elohim, the archetype pattern of the universe, using the correct Hebrew name of the Heavenly Father, composed and compiled by Henry C. Kinley, D.D., Ph.D., founder of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, P.O. Box 19877, Los Angeles, California. 90019 revised eight, um, 481. Okay, so we've read the, we've gone off, we've read the aims. So we could just read this part. Okay, in this pamphlet, we are using the correct Hebrew name and title of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Below, we are listing the incorrect titles and names used by Christendom and various religions and also the correct name and title of the Heavenly Father. Incorrect titles and names used by Christendom, God, Father, First Person, Jesus Christ, 
Son, second person, Holy Ghost, question mark, third person. The true name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is derived from the Tetragrammaton, YH. W -A. Excuse me, you didn't go over this. Correct name and title of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, Father, Elohim, Word or Son, Yahshua, Holy Spirit or Ghost. Thank the you. true name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is derived from the Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, with the A and E added to transliterate it pronounceable in the English language. There never was a J in the Hebrew language, neither was there a J in the language until the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renderings of the true name of the Father and Son. Okay, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it says in any language until the Middle Ages. You said the language, in any language. Thank you. In any language until the letter J. Well, you can stop from here. There, there never. There never was a J in the Hebrew language. I apologize. Neither was there a J in any language until the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renderings of the true name of the Father and Son. Jehovah is a misapplication of the name of the Heavenly Father, dating back to 1270 AD by adding the vowels taken from the name Adonai, means Lord or Baal, to the consonants J H B H. We are using two versions of the Holy Bible, King James Version, KJV, Holy Name Bible, H N B. The Holy Name Bible revised by the late A. B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, 14410 South Springfield Road, Brandywine, Maryland. 20613. And incidentally, that Bible is now available through Yahshua Promotions, and you can get information about how to get it after the class. Thank you. An introduction to the vision and revelation and subsequent teachings of Dr. Henry C. Kenley embraced in the philosophy known as Elohim, God, the archetype original pattern of the universe. From the earliest days of my youth, I had wondered how it was possible for Elohim to have made the heaven and the earth in six days. I wondered how it could be that no man had seen Yahweh, yet Moses wrote of the creation as an eyewitness. I determined, I determined to search in the very core of the universe itself, the unity of the spirit, Godhead, until the answer was revealed. I too would know the mystery of mysteries. I turned to the solitude of the desert, the wilderness with their singing streams. I turned to the solitude of the ocean's vastness in vain search. Bewildered, I turned to meditation upon the part of, upon that part of myself which was created in the image and likeness of Yahweh Elohim, about whom I wished to learn. I found then the true meaning of be still and know that I am Yahweh. My first lesson in universal knowledge. While in my meditation, I felt myself drifting away into a deep sleep, which was not sleep. I lost consciousness of my room, my bed, even my body. Yet I was not unconscious. The sensation of having my mind turned backward and inward persisted until I was no longer in possession 
of any earthly knowledge. I knew that I existed, and that was all. I did not exist in relation to anything I could recognize. All I could recognize was me. This was that part of me which was created in the image and likeness of Elohim. It was to that me that the creator spoke. He could do nothing with the egotistical, misdirected personality which had evolved from the many misconstrued concept as a creature of earthly flesh. The dizzy backward journey from the realm of time as I knew it into the eternity of pre-creation was exhausting, yet there was no fear. There was no me to be afraid. I had become absorbed into the universe. I was spoken to while I was in this state. I say spoken to, yet there was no impact of sound waves upon my ears, and there were no words used. The speech did not come from somewhere else. It seemed to originate from within me, and so it did, for I was now one with the universe. It was willed that I should know a certain fact, and instantly I knew it. Yahweh Elohim willed it, and as he willed it, as he willed so, the entire universe, with me as a part of it, reacted. I knew I was being transported somewhere, yet there was no sensation of motion. For the moment, I was universal, and motion in physical is physical. It occupies time and takes place in space, both of which are of this earth. It was being willed, <coughs> excuse me, that I should be at a point in the past where a revelation was to be made to me and I was responding to that divine will, I was there. I was there at the time in history just before Moses entered the cloud which surrounded the top of Mount Sinai. See chart and center of this brochure. I was not in the cloud nor on the mountain Neither was I suspended in space above them. I was, a, I was a part of the universe of which these were but the visible counterparts. I watched the children of Israel approach the foot of the mountain. I felt, I felt rather than saw Moses and the 70 elders enter the mountain, for it was as if they were treading upon a part of me. The beating of their feet disturbed my vibration, and I knew I was being visited by mortals of a lower realm. Then the heavy tread of the multitude ceased, and a lesser one, Moses, continued to approach. I could sense the nearness of a soul, which was soon to become pure intelligence with me moving to onward toward its perfection. I knew the 70 old men and stopped while, Mo while Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu continued. Finally, only the one most advanced soul entered into the cloud, which was the connecting link between spirit and matter. Too dense to be spirit and too ethereal to be pure matter. The cloud became the meeting place between the soul of a mortal man and the eternal soul. You want to take over, Dr. Warren? Feel my sense of uh, vibratory balance was disturbed. I was feared and man was invading my domain. But soon he was to become one with me in the spirit. And together we could approach Yahweh Elohim. I could feel the man Moses being commanded to lie down upon the ground. 
placed his earthly body upon the earth of which it was part, and I part, and where I had left mine. Once more I could feel the pulling into space, through space into time, through time into eternity, as the part of Moses which was made in the image and likeness of Elohim separated from his physical counterpart. Once more my balance was restored, for spirit communed with spirit. It was as though I was reliving my life in the age of Moses. I could see the prayers I had prayed being unfolded and flashed on the screen of cosmic consciousness. At the same time as were Moses pleading for the Israelites. He's blended into a sympathy of universal desire, which was to be fulfilled before we return to the shackles of mortal limitation. Yet our return would hold forth a promise given only to those whose spiritual eyes had been opened. He and I became one in the universe and awaited the pleasure of Elohim of creation. As one senses the approach of a source of tremendous power, so all around us became as one gigantic electric charge. It was flowing through us and emanating from us. For we were one with it. It was universal and we were a part of the universe. We and our surroundings had been radiant with light, but now we begin to dim. There was no need to see. We could sense with greater clarity, clarity as the source of power came near. Greater and greater, it became until we were vibrating with such frequency as to approach insensibility. After all, we were not Yahweh Elohim. It was a provision of his superior build, wisdom that no man was permitted to see his face. Our surroundings changed from dimness to darkness and then to blackness of interstellar space where darkness becomes an impenetrable solid. When? How? There is no when, there is no how in eternity. As it was will, so, it, so is it. As if to further deduce himself to our limitation, Yahweh Elohim did not present himself as the great source of power we felt him to be. Ours were not spirit minds, they were but human minds free from physical bodies for the moment and functioning on a spiritual plane. The human mind cannot accept that which it cannot conceive. It conceives only in comparison with something else it can and has conceived in the past. We had seen men, we were men with limited capacity, and we knew something of these limitations. Thus, Yahweh Elohim presented himself to us as a man, but, but with unlimited capacity. See chart letter A, great heavenly anthropomorphic being. That he is, he was recognizable as a man, an incorporeal spirit man, Elohim. The wisdom that he imparted now came as if it, in words uttered by the figure which had appeared out of the blackness or before the creation of the sun, and now stood in all his glory before us. And our finite minds comprehend his words of wisdom. We were in the realm of, and Elohim said, let there be, and there was. It is of this vision and revelation and the wisdom that imparted to the writer during this experience when the astral man was out of the body that we wish to pass unto other seekers after truth by the intangible divine pattern of the universe. 
C letter B on chart, which was first shown to Moses in 1490 BBY, before the birth of Yahshua. And revealed in this age of the writer, Yahweh Elohim, for new plan and advance each detail of the universe, even to the finite meanderings of the mind of man's search of happiness. By this intangible pattern was the first physical tabernacle built in the wilderness, which symbolically prophesied every major event in the history of the world. From this same pattern, the writer has involved a philosophical measuring route which can be applied to events to occur with the same unerring accuracy as did the prophets predict. The events of human history to the birth of Yahshua Messiah, it was by this pattern that Daniel interpreted the king's dream and foretold the fall of an empire so vast as to seem impregnable. It was the loss of this pattern which caused King Saul to consult the woman of Endor and communicated with Samuel to learn of his downfall. It is the loss of this pattern today which has brought the whole, which has brought the world upon the brink of cataclysm second only to days of Noah. In the 43 years since this vision in Revelation, the writer has developed a philosophy, a philosophy which enriches the spiritual faith of any seeker and strips the tradition, traditions and hypocrisy from all dogma. It returns to a religious concept which can be verified scientifically as well as scripturally. It is hope for the unbeliever and true light for those who have started on their way to eternal life. In presenting this series of reflections on recent metaphysical discoveries, it is taken for granted that the reader is sincere in his search for Yahweh Elohim, that he, like countless other millions, really want to know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. This is the author's justification for presenting this work, contributing to the reader's spiritual satisfaction and never-ending search for truth. It is not the author's aim to deny the faith of any. Neither is it his desire to circumscribe truth as it has been revealed to him by the dogma of any denomination. Truth is universal. All that is required of the student is sincerity and willingness to accept facts regardless of whether or not they fit into some preconceived idea carried over from a doctrinal belief. On first reading, many statements contained here will appear contrary to theologic, theology, and so they may be theology. So they may, so that they may be. But true theology is the theology of study of Yahweh Elohim, the theories of man notwithstanding. Facts shall be given to the student as they were spiritually presented to the writer. Conclusion in all cases are left to the discretion of the reader. Him that had an ear, let him hear. First among the requirements for securing spiritual blessings from these pages is peace of mind. As when the master desired to pray, he chose a place of solitude apart from the pressure of daily living, usually in the vast stillness of a mountainside. There in the majestic grandeur of the nature which he had helped his father to create in the realm of the invisible, the materialized son of Yahweh Elohim stripped himself of all earthly restrictions and stood spiritually naked before the throne. Thus out of the thus out of the Self of daily necessity, 
his mind became the instrument through which flowed the will of his father. Father, thus it is with the mind of man today. Along with this communion, it is the will of the Father to reveal to his children the mysteries of his universe. Be still and know that I am Yahweh. Once man has withdrawn from his physical surroundings, the next thing is the clearing of the mind. For it is in a still, small voice that Elohim speaks. Having done this, the meditation assumes a deeper significance than mere study. It becomes a spiritual oneness with the Father. The revelation, the divine pattern of the universe, embraces the existence of Yahweh Elohim, his divine law and eternal purpose. This theme is carried through the dispensation and ages as they are known to religious students. Comparatively speaking, it is new, yet in real, re, reality, it is old. It is divine, physiological, scriptural, and scientific. It is an interpretation of the Bible, revolutionary in its an impact upon modern thinking. It is one concise pattern or plan followed by the creator Elohim from the inception of the universe and has been revealed to the author by divine source. First conceived in the realm of the invisible, the objects of the pattern were then materialized in the visible realm, counterpart of the original creation. Yahweh Elohim is invisible. It stands to reason that the product of his activity should likewise be invisible. But having made man to people a visible, but having made man to people a visible, physical planet, it became necessary for the father to crystallize, make visible for man the object of his creation. Man is too limited to enter into the invisible realm with Elohim and behold the creation and its purity. This is a future state which man should have to attain if he ever achieves his theological inspired ambition of being with Elohim and his angels. From the magnificence of the solar systems and the majestic of the mighty sea, to the molecular structure of a grain of sand, the changelessness of eternal spirit law points to a fixed pattern by which the universe was created. Man being made in the image and likeness of Elohim follows the same plan in his progress as does a star in the vault of heaven. So to man was this plan revealed now that he is a creature permitted to reason, Yahweh Elohim first showed to Moses, then the Apostle John, and the last time to the author, Dr. Henry C. Clinton. So the angels of the invisible realm and the patriarchs and prophets of the visible world spoke and wrote under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Truth in its simplicity was not revealed to them. It was the prerogative, the prerogative of Yahweh Elohim alone to reveal the deepest of his secrets to whomsoever he will. First Peter 1, 10 through 12. It is significant that both John in Paul, refer to Yahshua the Messiah as Yahweh Elohim, manifest in the flesh. John 1, 1 to 14, 1 Timothy 3, 16. Thus he, Yahshua the Messiah, while in the invisible, was the source from which these mysteries and secrets originated, both the visible and the invisible. It is for this reason that while he was in the flesh, he knew all things and was able to form all miracles. He raised the dead, healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, 
and read the unexpressed thoughts of men. He caused the fig tree to wither and die, and with a word still the ocean-born tempest. These things were possible in the visible counterpart of the universe because they were first established in the invisible. Yastro was able to perform these seemingly miracles in the visible universe because he was part of their inception. When he was with them in the invisible before the creation of even the solar system of which this earth is a part of. Man knows them to be of divine origin because they are demonstrated by the divine pattern of the universe, which was shown first to Moses, then to the author. That pattern, as it has been revealed, is the materialization and the tangible of the original divine law and the intangible. Yahshua in the unity of the spirit was co-author of this law. Yahshua in the flesh demonstrated the working process of the law of spirit and body in the pattern. He and his father purpose in the realm of eternity or before time began. Having seen all these things, a responsibility rested upon the writer. The voice came to him and spoke Man, the sound was like thunder. Yes, Joshua, no words were spoken, but the writer sensed being called and in response to seeing an attitude of humility. Answer me, man, what will you do with what I have shown you? I knew not how to answer. Answer me, man. I know not, Joshua, I cried, that I will show you. The voice thunder, but first I will show you the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in them is. I will show you, as I have shown Moses, how I have made them by the pattern like me, but less than me. Then I will show you how I made man greater than these, less than me, but closest to me are my creatures of this flame. Then I will show him the creation, angelic, and physical, C letters and figures A, B, and C, one through six on the chart. From the blackness of when no light had been created until the earth was formed, vegetation and people, the solar system had been created. Space had been brought into existence and the planets hung in their respective orbits in outer space. I followed the process of the creation with my Finite mind until I saw the uh, manifestations of the spirit law by which the universe would operate from out from alley to top or beginning to end. I saw the master plan as it originated in the mind of Yahweh Elohim and span and yet unrecorded history of the universe. Then I watch as the first electron was crystallized into visible being according to the plan identical with the pattern of the universe. Then I watch as man, the final creature, came into existence. Electron by electron, cell by cell, atom by atom. Then I knew all things were made according to the pattern I had been shown. I realized that if I knew where an object or event, I, I knew where an object or event was placed in the scale of divine evolution, I would know how nearly perfect it was. And thus, what were the next steps toward perfection it would have to take? Thus, I became an instrument whereby the great universal intelligence would advise its own of the universal status quo. At any time they chose to apply the measuring rod of the divine pattern of the universe. Once more, the voice thundered at my consciousness. Answer me, man. What will you do with what I have shown you? This time I answered. I cried. Teach your people your will, Yahshua. You want to take over? This, I am, this I am endeavoring to do 
in the book entitled Elohim, the Archetype Original Pattern of the Universe. In this book, it is the writer's hope to reveal the purpose of Yahweh Elohim in confirmation of the prophetic and apostolic vision and revelation in this current age, what was shown him in eternity of his spiritual day of Yahweh Mount Sinai. Masters and teachers are impelled to move and speak as the epoch of the earth history changed. Now is the acceptable time to call to the attention of man unchangeable will of Yahweh Elohim and express in the scripture for the man's tradition and ritualistic ceremonialism. After all, we should seek to know Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah for ourselves as he really is and as he actually is. Would you like to take over, Teresa? That's the, end. Thank you. That's the end of the page. Oh, is that all? It's only 11 yeah. pages. Okay. How beautiful that it was. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Allen. Thank you, Dr. Warren. It's just beautifully done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Yashua. You guys deserve the best. You know. And where were we all in 1931, 9 o'clock in the morning on June 6th? Nowhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> My mom hadn't even been born yet. <laughs> That's true. Neither was mine. Okay, so we want to um, go through this again and um, discuss it. Um, Dr. Um, Frank Lewis, do you have anything to say? Silence. That's a beautiful pamphlet. I think everybody knows that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that man saw a vision of revelation and uh, put it down in words, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Felt like I was going in time with him for a moment as he was explaining it. Yeah. It's it's hard to even fathom. <clears throat> so we're going to read this again and pick up the scriptures and take it slow and look at the charts and try to uh, get something even more. Okay, okay. so this you go. If you don't buy or you want me to. I can go ahead. Okay. Do you know Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua whom Yahweh has sent? Yahshua whom he had sent. An introduction to the Elohim archetype pat, original pattern of the universe using the correct Hebrew name of the father composed and compiled by Henry C. Kenley, D.D., Ph.D., founder of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, post office by 19877, Los Angeles, California, revised in April of 81. In this, you want to keep going? An introduction to the vision and revelation as subsequent teachings of Dr. Henry C. Kenley embraced in the philosophy known as Elohim, God, the arch archetype, original pattern of the universe. From the earliest days of my youth, I had wondered how it was possible for Elohim to have made the heavens and the earth in six days. I wondered how it could be that no man had seen Yahweh, yet Moses wrote of the creation as an eyewitness. I determined to search in the very core of the universe itself the unity of the spirit, Godhead, until the answer was revealed. I, too, would know the mystery of mysteries. I turned to the solitude of the deserts, the wilderness with their singing streams. I turned to the solitude of the ocean's vastness in vain search. Bewildered, I turned to meditation upon that part of myself which was 
created in the image and likeness of Yahweh Elohim, about whom I wish to learn. I found then the true meaning of be still and know that I am Yahweh, my first lesson in universal knowledge. While in my meditation, I felt myself drifting away into a deep, into a sleep, which was not sleep. I lost consciousness of my room, my bed, even my body. Yet I was not unconscious. The sensation of having my mind turned backward and inward persisted until I was no longer in possession of any earthly knowledge. I knew that I existed, and that was all. I did not realize I did not exist in relation to anything I could recognize. I could, all I could recognize was me. This was that part of me which was created in the image and likeness of Elohim. It was to that me that the creator spoke. He could do nothing but the egotistical, misdirected personality which had evolved from many misconstrued concepts as a creature of earthly flesh. I, me, say... I, just, want to, I, I just wanted to make a comment here. That, I, I, when I read, the first time I read that, I said, that is so true. We all have it like, I'm black, I'm this, I'm that. And it's like, he could do nothing with the egotistical, misdirected personality, which had evolved from the many misconstrued that means lies concept as a creature of earthly flesh you had something to say dr lewis yes if you go up uh the paragraph where he has in quotation be still and know that i'm yahweh why does he do that it's because it's in the bible right uh and that's it's in uh psalms and he calls that his first lesson in universal knowledge. <laughs> it's to be mm -hmm. still and know that I'm Yahweh. That's in uh, Psalms 46 and 10, I believe. Okay, let me see. Psalms 46 and 10. Where is it? Psalms 46 and 10. Six and... <clears throat> um, 46 and 2 you said Dr. Lewis 10. 10 10 be still and know that I am Elohim I will be exalted among the heathen I will be exalted in the earth so he said that uh, well First, he, what he was talking about that when he was, uh, you know, I mean, he was thinking about things. He's saying, how can, uh, how can uh, they write about the creation and nobody saw him? Uh, how right. could that be? You know, then he, then he starts looking in all the natural. He says he goes to the wilderness and, and, and goes to the uh, uh, vastness of the ocean. He says, in vain search. Yeah. Then he turned to that part of him that was made in the image and likeness of the creator. That's your soul and your spirit, which he's going to work with there. So the thing is, uh, and he talks about, uh, uh, we just read the, uh, that me that is uh, uh, made in his image after his likeness. And the way that, uh, well... I don't know how, I don't know what you call the fault. I guess you call it false doctrine. <laughs> they say that, <clears throat> that you are a negative threefold entity. Well, that's not what he said. He said he went to the, that part of him that was made in the image and likeness of the creator. We know the creator is spirit and he's a spirit embodiment. And that's really what your spirit and soul is. Mm -hmm. And I think the scripture lesson talked about that a little bit, if you think about it. Uh, one of the verses, which is, uh, and these are the two scriptures that are on the front page of this pamphlet and the Elohim book. 
Isaiah uh, 57, 15. It's one Isaiah. of them. It's Isaiah. On the screen. <clears throat> Isaiah 57, 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Now, uh, uh, so here he's saying, thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabit, inhabiteth eternity. In other words, uh, well, that's where he, he, he is eternity and everything abides within him, which is eternal. And it says whose name is holy. See, he's got a holy name. That's why we use it. I dwell in the high and holy place. And you know what? When we correlate our the pattern, uh, the pattern has a most holy place and holy place. Uh, <coughs> dwell in the high and holy place with him. Well, that's, that's representing our spirit and soul. <laughs> in other words, he's, he's ever present. And, uh, and with him also, there's a contrite and humble spirit. And that contrite means, uh, well, in the Strong's, it means to crumble or break. In other words, uh, you know, you, uh, well, anyway, he's got to revive you. You understand? And you got to be, he really has to mm, tear down, like you were saying, the egotistical and all the carnal stuff so that he can build up. Uh, a true knowledge and understanding in us. In other words, we have to die <laughs> and be buried, and then he can resurrect. That's another acronym for IDMR, I die, Messiah, resurrect. Okay, and then the next one, read that, Micah 5 and 2 there. Micah 5, verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, Ephrata, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of have been from of old, from everlasting. That's the whole yeah. Message. So now it's talking about that's telling you where Yahshua was going to be born when he come in through the flesh, through the loins of the Virgin Mary. Uh, but thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. Yahshua is the king of kings, you know, uh, king of the kingdom, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. You see how Yahshua has come from everlasting? And that's what he said we were reading, and we'll read it later, that he was with his father, and he's a co uh, co-author of the creation pretty much in other words uh the true um well let's go to just go to um well um the moses chart that we always get and you have yahweh which we say is the father pure spirit which he showed this by divine vision revelation then he took on shape and form and what that is that's like uh Proverbs 8.22 there. You might as well read that. And I think he alluded to that in the, maybe we shouldn't. But anyway, uh, uh, you see when when uh, Yahweh takes on shape and form as Elohim, and it's in the Bible also in Isaiah 45 and 5, that I'm Yahweh there, uh, and there's none else. I'm Elohim and there's none beside me. And then later on, he says, I uh, form the light and create darkness. Well, when he forms a light, that was him taking on shape and form, being the word or son or Elohim. That's the light of the world. And he also in Genesis 1, 5, called, he called the light day. Well, really, when he come forth from eternity and took on shape and form, that was a birthday <laughs> and that was done in the realm of eternity <laughs> that wasn't no june 6th then because there ain't no months or days yet you know what i'm saying in other words it's in eternity when he come forth 
And so he's the day of eternity that everything abides within. Uh, but uh, so, you know, we do show that today is the day he was physically born. But uh, you can't put no month and day when he come forth as the Messiah there, when he took on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim. See, uh, and Yahweh Elohim is Yahshua. And that was quoted before the song today, uh, 1 John 5 and 20. It says, we know that the son of Yahweh is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, that we are in him that is true, even in his son, Yahshua Messiah. This is the true Elohim. He just said Yahshua Messiah is the true Elohim and eternal life. See, and we didn't know that before we come to school. When you were thinking about Jesus, was you thinking about him coming from eternity? Like was prophesied there in Micah that we just read? No, I wasn't. No, did, we didn't know about no uh, Proverbs 8.22 either, did we? Read that. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way. You see how he, he possessed Yahshua? Before. Uh, before and before the beginning of his ways, read. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up before from... his works of old. Didn't Isaiah 46 9 and 10 say, Remember the former things of old? Well, it's before all them things. <laughs> Yahweh possessed him. <laughs> uh, in you know, because Yahweh is pure spirit and he's the one purposing uh, to take on shape and form as Elohim. And that's the beginning of the creation of Yahweh, which we read in the last transcript we had. I mean, the last pamphlet we were going into. Um, so that's the beginning. And uh, when Moses saw him in that vision, uh, well, first of all, well, no, we can't. Anyway, when Yahweh spoke down the law, it was June 6th. That's in Exodus, the 19th chapter. I'm sorry, excuse me, what are we reading? Uh, we were reading Proverbs 8.22. Proverbs and said, uh, before his works of old, I was, read on. Or read it again. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before mm -hmm. his works of old. That's right. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. Yeah, he said up from the beginning before the earth ever was. In other words, he's the creator. And uh, and and like Dr. Kinley showed, he showed that Yahweh's the father. That's first state, the pure spirit. We never heard nobody talk about pure spirit before we come down to this school. And, and he was without discernible shape and form. We never heard nothing like that. And we never we never heard about anybody seeing the creator either. We wasn't seeing that or and understanding it. And to show that he was just like it says at the top of the chart, Elohim's the archetype original pattern of the universe. I think we're going a little too far farther than what the, the pamphlet's going into. But it but it is a uh what we're uh, in uh, June 6, 1931, nine o'clock in the morning, that's when he uh gave this man uh, Henry Clifford Kinley a divine vision and revelation uh which is you know uh, what we call today June uh, June 6 according to our calendar and it was June 6 year 1491 when he spoke his law down to the children of Israel uh and that was nine o'clock in the morning from a fiery cloud just like you see up there with his lips there and then when he has that vision atop of Mount Sinai, it's the, the of Yahweh Elohim in Exodus the 24th chapter. That is in the month of June. So when he sees Adam come forth on the sixth day of his vision, it's the month of June. In the sixth day of his vision, he sees Adam come forth, the first earthly son of Yahweh. And in principle, that would be him coming forth on June 6th. See, uh, from virgin mother earth, you understand? And so, um, and then that's, so that's when he spoke down the Ten Commandment law, June 6th. The fourth feast day is June 6th. 
And when Yahshua was born, he's born June 6, year 4,000. And when he dies, buries, resurrects, ascends, when he pours out the Holy Spirit, man was born June 6, year 4,034. <laughs> you know, born of the Spirit, being become a son of Yahweh. So that is the day of Pentecost. So you see how uh, it's an important day, which none of us knew that kind of stuff before we come down here. We was running around saying Merry Christmas on December 25th. <laughs> and that ain't nowhere close to June 6th. Matter of fact, it's totally opposite. And uh, he's born. This is the lifetime. Everything's coming to a live. Things are growing in the garden. You understand? Uh, fruit are... Uh, that's uh, I, June 6th. I just Go wanted ahead. to show you because you were working with contrite and on the Strong's here on this uh, Bible it shows uh, contrite it says it comes from 011792 it says crush literally power or figuratively contrite destruction it is related to to crumble to bruise literally or figuratively, to beat to pieces, to break in pieces, to bruise, contrite, to crush, to destroy, to humble, to oppress, to smite, to crush, be crushed, be contrite, be broken, um, to be shattered, to be made, contrite, to allow, to allow oneself to be crushed. So that might be helpful, maybe not. Right. Okay, where am I? No, that's not it. Okay. Can we go back to the transcript? Or did you want proper? Yeah, what do you want, um, Dr. Lewis? To the pamphlet, I meant. He's in shock. Maybe his computer is out. Oh, he's still there. He just muted. Oh, somehow I got, I was muted there. Oh, you were talking? Or I muted myself. Yeah, I was preaching all kind of things there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was telling. That's telling I, secret. I was, I was telling that the pamphlet would have been a good thing to go back to. Okay. But that we were in Proverbs there, and uh, and we were just showing how that he was before all things. Uh, before everything was created, he, he was brought forth and he says, I was daily his delight. That's, uh, it, it also says something else there. Um, well, anyway, well, Proverbs 22, that 822, 822. Yeah. but anyway, that's fine. It's just, uh, we're just showing how that, uh, uh okay, well, wait, 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 I almost got it. I almost got it. Relax. That, that when we show the, the Yahweh is the pure, um, yeah, he was set from everlasting when there's no, uh, and so uh, I forget when you keep reading there, or maybe it's before. Okay, we want to pick it up. Someone no, said no, it. no, I don't want to even go any further. I, 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 I mean, there's a it's lot. It's too late to now. You've made the confirmation. Can we start at 20? <laughs> No, just start 22 and come to it. 22, thank you. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, wherever the earth was. Now you see, when he, now he's the archetype original pattern of the universe. And so before anything is made, ever the earth was, in other words, those attributes that were without shape and form, which we didn't know about that neither, it's all come by vision revelation. When those attributes took on an organized shape and form or a spirit embodiment seen in vision and revelation, uh, that's when he was set up. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was, he come for, but that's still Yahweh as Yahweh Elohim. And then when he comes in a fleshly body, which we'll read later on, that's that's what the word made flesh. He's a unity. And we never knew nothing about that before we come down here. You see, uh, and everything that he makes is spirit materialized. That's what your body is. 
uh, you're made up of spirit, soul, body. And so everything, and, and I think he, well, we should read the pamphlet again because he's going to talk about uh, that he, well, oh. we know one thing. The first thing he created oh. was the angels. Then he created the physical things. And then what's going to happen is he's going to bring an end to these physical things and go back to the angelic. He more or less said that in the pamphlet. This is what you referred to. Then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was yeah. daily his delight, rejoicing right. always before him. That's right. That's right. And uh, and he's rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. See, uh, we are his offspring, but you got to be born again. So really, June 6, 19, Dr. Kinley was born, well, he was born September 30th, 1895. But when uh, June 6, 1931 come, he got the vision and the revelation. That was when he was born again. <laughs> and that's his birth. Yes. I, think, I think he even said that. <laughs> that that's when he was born. So uh, the same way with us. We have a physical birthday but uh, you have to be born again uh, to see the kingdom or to enter into his kingdom there. Okay. Uh, Mike, can you so, so thank you for reading that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. That's right. So where, where are we reading from now? The Disney page one, page one, bottom paragraph and the pamphlet well you want to read from here while while in my meditation yes do you want to get to it or you want me to read yeah i thought you were going to read i am but it's not on the screen it's but not? i've got the, i've got the pamphlet wait a minute what's on wait, wait 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 what's on the screen proverbs 8 Okay, that is a mistake. What's on the what's on it now? You're in the right place. Okay, thank you. While in my meditation, I felt myself drifting away into a sleep which was not sleep. I lost consciousness of my room, my bed, even my body. Yet I was not unconscious. The sensation of having my mind turned backward and inward persisted until I was no longer in possession of any earthly knowledge. I knew that I existed and that was all. I did not exist in relation to anything I could recognize. All I could recognize was me. This was that part of me which was created in the image and likeness of Elohim. It was to that me that the creator spoke. He could do nothing with the egotistical, misdirected personality which had evolved from the many, many misconstrued concepts as a creature of earthly flesh. The dizzy backward journey from the realm of time as I knew it into the eternity of pre-creation was exhausting. Yet there was no fear. There was no me to be afraid. I had become absorbed into the universe. I was spoken to while I was in this state. I was, I say spoken to, yet there was no impact of sound waves upon my ears and there were no words used. The speech did not come from somewhere else. It seemed to originate from within me. And so it did, for I was now one with the universe. It was willed that I should know a certain fact, and instantly I knew it. Yahweh Elohim willed it, and as he willed it so, as he willed so, the entire universe, with me as a part of it, reacted. I knew I was being transported somewhere yet there was no sensation of, move, of motion. For the moment, I was universal, and motion is physical. 
it occupies time and takes place in space, both of which are of this earth. It was being willed that I should be at a point in the past where a revelation was to be made to me and I was responding to that divine will. I was there. I was there at the time in history just before Moses entered the cloud which surrounded the top of Mount Sinai. See chart in the center of this brochure. I was not in the cloud nor on the mountain. Neither was I suspended in space above them. I was a part of the universe of which these were but the of which these were but the visible counterparts. I watched the children of Israel approach the foot of the mountain. I felt rather than saw Moses and the 70 elders enter the mountain. For it was as if they were treading upon a part of me. The beating of their feet disturbed my vibration, and I knew I was being visited by mortals of a lower realm. Then the heavy tread of the multitude ceased, and a lesser one, Moses, continued to approach. I could sense the nearness of a soul, which was soon to become pure intelligence with me, moving onward toward its perfection. I knew the 70 old men had stopped while Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu continued. Finally, only the mo one most advanced soul entered into the cloud, which was the connecting link between spirit and matter. Too dense to be spirit and too ethereal to be pure matter. The cloud became the meeting place between the soul of a mortal man and the eternal soul. Still, That's great, I'm, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And you know, when Yahshua said, uh, after he resurrected uh, in Luke 24, 25, uh, he told his disciples, or those that he appeared to on the road to Emmaus. Um, boy, I can't even remember right now. Old uh, fools and slow of yeah. heart. Yeah, he tells them, old fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, he expound them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So when he has this vision, where does Yahweh have him start? Beginning at Moses. <laughs> the same thing that Moses saw, he saw at the same That's right. time. That's doing something, isn't it? Yes. Catching that man up on June 6, 1931 and taking him clear back uh, to when Moses had the vision and revelation uh, at, at 1491 there. Uh, and, um, uh, well, you'll see 1490 also at times, but again, uh, that's when the tabernacle was dedicated. That was a, that was a, that, that, that year was a, I mean, when you think that he started April as the first month of the year in Exodus 12, Brings them through, you know, all those, you know, that brings them through the wide waters, the Red Sea, rains down manna, starts the Sabbath day, speaks down the law. Moses uh, goes up uh, with an air native in the bayou, sees Yahweh Elohim. Uh, he's up there 40 days when he goes up there in the mountain, sees the days of creation, sees Yahweh Elohim, the book of life, sees the the pattern gets the first table of stone, comes down, breaks the table of stone, tells them down there 40 days what happened and, and what was shown, and then goes back up with a second table of stone, comes back down. And then by the time that, uh, from the time he saw the tabernacle in the month of June in a vision, uh, they done built it April 1st in Exodus 40. That was a lot. That was an action-packed year, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> April, April there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was doing a lot of stuff. So now he's 
So here he is. Uh, he's caught up right there during the time of Moses. And, uh, and he says the cloud was a meeting place between the soul of a mortal man and the eternal soul. In other words, that spirit communicating with spirit, but that's the real, you know, in other words, he's catching man up in his heart and mind. And he's going to explain more about that, which is just, it's just, uh, well, uh, um, it's phenomenal. I mean, uh, uh, the vision and revelation. I mean, this is the true teaching that Yahweh has given man at the end of this age uh, by divine vision and revelation. And so we are so blessed to be sitting down yes. here and uh, partaking of this. And uh, and we 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 just we're probably on page two or something right now, aren't we? Something like that. Three, <laughs> maybe three. Okay. I know uh, someone. Dr. Burns has her hand up, Dr. Robinson. Okay, go ahead, Dr. Robinson. I was uh, trying to find out if I had that uh, pamphlet, but while uh, you all were talking, I was looking and I discovered that I do have it. I was looking, for, was going to ask for the name of the pamphlet, but I do, I find I do have it. So, okay, that's good. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I remember somebody talked about Dr. Kinley, they were at the airport with Dr. Kinley and he said that he could fill the airplanes taking off and landing with, with within him that he had feel like a connection to the to the creation but just the idea that um <clears throat> dr kinley's having this vision and revelation and he's not uh above it or be, uh, below it but he's like part of it and he could feel them like he is the mount he could feel them walking upon him and he could feel a, a soul that was going to become pure intelligence that's just a different point of view that I've ever that, that I've ever experienced. So that's pretty amazing. Yeah, they asked, somebody asked him. Well, they were asking him, and then uh, the Ohio State Convention in 1974, they said. Uh, Dr. Kinley, I want to have the same vision of revelation you had. In other words, he got to be, got, got be caught up like that. And uh, and he pointed to the charts and say, help yourself. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't got nothing else to show you than what he gave me to show you on these charts. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so we are uh, part, we're, we're having a vision of revelation too, but it's in part. That guy got it all in one shot. And you think all this information that you hear him preach, writing in the LOM book, writing in these pamphlets, and he got it all in one day? Wow. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Yes, it is. You're right. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> and so... Uh, uh, yeah, where you have uh, Joseph Smith saying he had a vision. It took him eight years to decipher those gold tablets he said he got from the angel Moroni. <laughs> but uh, and, the and still use, well, see there, that's what they write in the Book of Mormon. They have a, people that said they saw him too, you know, and they signed their name and all that kind of stuff. But hey, if the creator give you a vision, he's going to tell you what his name is. You ain't going to be in there. That's right. Uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. You understand? Saint ain't right. right, neither is Jesus Christ. So man right. didn't have a true divine vision or revelation because he wouldn't be using Lord God and Jesus. And then trying to write some other book <laughs> and say that's a companion to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and can't explain the Bible. Uh, anyway. <laughs> And I didn't realize that this testimony was an introduction to the textbook. It's the first time it, it, that it sort of jumped out at me. It's like, this is what I saw, and you know, this is what happened to me, and then this is what I saw. And it gives you the whole textbook. That's amazing. Yeah, this is his living testimony. 
yeah. he's he's he's, try, he's trying to share what happened with it, you know, and uh, it's beautiful. Okay, so where are we? We're on page right. three. Still, my sense this part here, yeah. right here. Yeah. Okay, so when I'm yet. sorry, he says two tenths to be spirit. Is is he talking about Joshua, the son of Nun, transforming? Finally, unto the one most advanced soul entered into the cloud, which was the connecting link between spirit and matter. Is that Joshua, the son of Nun? No, he's trying to show. I think he's just talking about, you know, uh, uh, well, it talks the connecting link between spirit and matter. Right. And so he's showing that they're uh, like, uh, it's just too dense to be spirit and too ethereal to be pure matter. Mm -hmm. uh, then it says the cloud became the meeting place between the soul of a mortal man and the eternal soul. So it's just showing how that the creator who is so much greater and Yahweh is spirit and they to worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. He's able to communicate. Uh, Moses had a physical body. And so did Yah, so did Dr. Kinley, but they, he's caught up in the spirit now. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he's just trying to make a distinction between spirit and matter, I think, is what he was trying to do. Okay. See what I'm talking about? Kind yeah. of. And he'll continue. I mean, he just doesn't stop there, as you know. <laughs> he still has, we're just stopping, but he's going to continue and talk about the things. Okay? Okay. right here still my sense still, still my sense of vibratory balance was the you have the chart up right now you don't have the pamphlet but you don't have the pamphlet up uh lenore there we go still my sense of vibratory balance was disturbed i was spirit and man was invading my domain but soon, but soon he was to become one with me in the spirit, and together we could approach Yahweh Elohim. I could feel the man Moses being commanded to lie down upon the ground, place his earthly body upon the earth of which it was part, and where I had left mine. Once more, I could feel the pulling into space through space into time, through time into, into eternity as the part of Moses, which was made in the image and likeness of Elohim, separated from his physical counterpart. Once more, my balance was restored, for spirit communed with spirit. It was as though I was reliving my life in the age of Moses. I could see the prayers I had prayed being unfolded and flashed on the screen of cosmic consciousness at the same time as were Moses' pleadings for the Israelites. These blended into a symphony of universal desire, which was to be fulfilled before we returned to the shackles of mortal, mortal limitation. Yet our return would hold forth a promise given only to those whose spiritual eyes had been opened. He and I became one in the universe and awaited the pleasure of the Elohim of creation. As one senses the approach of a source of tremendous power, so all around us became as one gigantic electric electric charge it was fall it was flowing through us and emanating from us for we were one with it it was universal and we were a part of the universe we and our surroundings have been radiant with light but now we began to dim there was no need to see we could sense with greater clarity as the source of power came nearer, 
greater and greater it became until we were vibrating with such frequency as to approach insensibility. After all, we were not Yahweh Elohim. It was a provision of his superior wisdom that no man was permitted to see his face. Our surroundings changed from dimness to darkness and then to blackness of eternal, excuse me, our surroundings changed from dimness to darkness and then to blackness of interstellar space where darkness becomes an impenetrable solid. When, how, there is no when, there is no how in eternity. As it was willed, so is it. As if the further as if to further reduce himself to our limitations, Yahweh Elohim did not present himself as the greater as the great source of power. We felt him to we felt him to be. Ours were not spirit minds, they were but human minds, freed from physical bodies for the moment and functioning on a spiritual plane. The human mind cannot accept that which it cannot conceive. It conceives only turning pages. Well, we probably it could stop. It conceives only I mean, in comparison with something else. That's a lot ask. of stuff there. Yeah. You see, <laughs> you see where he was talking about uh, our, our minds were not spiritual minds. They were human minds, but they were freed from physical bodies and functioning on a spiritual plane. <laughs> and he's showing how great he is. You know, I mean, well, uh, you can tell this man uh, he was caught up. And and again, when we're talking about being uh, uh uh, June around June 6th, you know, and correlate with Moses too. You know, I mean, Noah, even Noah at the end of the antediluvian age, he had a vision from the creator. And when the flood happened, it happened May 17th and it rained for 40 days. Well, May 17 to June. That'd be to June 27. That's 40 days. Well, right in the middle is June 6. See how that age ended right around the same time, June 6 there? May 17th, and, and the flood happened for 40 days, which would be June 27. So at the end of the age, a man had a vision. And the age ended, uh, you had June 6, like right in the middle there. Well, then when Yahshua Messiah ends the, well, he's born June 6th, year 4,000. He lives 33 years. He dies April uh, the 14th. He's buried all the 15th. He resurrects on the 16th. And Terry's 40 days making spiritual appearances. Uh, and so when he ascends, that's May 26th, and then 10 days later pours out the Holy Spirit, June 6th. You see how that, again, the age going from one age to the other, and then Yahweh repeats it, giving a man a vision revelation in 1931, June 6th. But, uh, uh, but it was, uh, but for the way he, be, <laughs> he said he became one with the universe. I mean, and he also talked about how that Yahweh willed these things and, and, and we reacted, you know, because that's another thing we found out that when he asked, when Moses asked him what his name was at the burning bush, he said that he was Aya Asher Aya. And that's also on the front cover, uh, I believe, of that uh, pamphlet, same as the Elohim book. It has I, Asher, I, Elohim, the archetype, original pattern, the universe, and had those scriptures that we used. And I, Asher, I means I will be what I will to be. 
And so he's the one that willed uh, everything into existence. Now that is, it, it just, it's, it, it's phenomenal when you think about all this whole, well, I think he talked about it well, later on with the solar system. I mean, when you have a sun 93 million miles away uh, and the earth is rotating on its axis, causing uh, light and darkness and the seasons of the year, and they're all going by a pattern. We never heard about no pattern <laughs> and, and how it was correlated and so on. And so, you know, this man had a vision of revelation to be able to explain what Moses saw, when he saw it, how he saw it, and then explain uh, the book of Revelation with John and everything in between. I mean, um, that's beautiful. Uh, I, I just, it's it just, well, it's all beautiful. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great witness. And uh, I just wanted to at least say something about it. So, uh, and, and you know, that's the same thing that the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians. Mm, second. And I think it's also our, uh, you know, in the Elohim book, he has, uh, uh, you know, the first step in uh, the psychological preparation. Uh, it talks about, uh, what does it say there? I had to grab it there. It must be understood, remembered, that this teaching is not a concept of the writer of this book but is supported by Elohim, the archetype, original pattern, of the universe. See title and illustration on the cover of this book. Seen by Moses alone in the burning bush and also atop Mount Sinai, who wrote the Pentateuch law. Later, Elohim appeared to the prophets who wrote the books of the prophets and to the apostles, then appeared to John alone on the Isle of Patmos, who wrote the Revelation, and last of all, to the writer of this book. <laughs> that, that's the first step. <laughs> anyway, and this, this uh, well, praise Yahshua Messiah. This is a really nice thing to read here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to the bottom of page four, last sentence to get continuity of thought. The human mind cannot accept that which it cannot conceive. It, it conceives only in comparison with something else it can and has conceived in the past. We had seen men, we were men with limited capacities. And we knew something of these limitations. Thus, Yahweh Elohim presented himself to us as a man, but with unlimited capacities. Great heavenly anthropomorphic being. And we are is. limited, aren't we? He's unlimited. You just mm -hmm. can't, you know, that's, he's so great and unlimited that, uh, we have to take our physical bodies to learn more about him. <laughs> you know, in other words, that's one thing I kind of repeated a lot because I liked it when I heard him say it. Uh, he said, uh, there's one thing we don't know nothing about, and that's learning about Yahweh without a physical body. And I, and, I remember people used to say a bird can see better than you. We definitely have limitations. Yeah, and we're we're on this earth plane, but he's he can catch you up in the spirit. And that's what the apostle Paul said there. He said he was caught up to the third heaven, and he said, whether in the body, out of the body, I can't tell. But Yahweh Elohim knows. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he, so he talked about laying his body down there. But then uh I mean there's a lot of stuff he's talking about, but that A, yeah, he said look at A there. And uh and and what you have on this chart, uh, when you see Yahweh Elohim, that's what A is over there. 
And then when you look uh, and what you see is A, B, C, and then you see the six days of creation. Uh, And A is Yahweh Elohim, which is the word or son. B is the intangible sanctuary or tabernacle pattern shown to Moses in a vision. Then C is back into himself, and then he creates the creation. So he sees Elohim pattern, Elohim creation. And if you look on John on the Isle of Patmos, that's what he sees. At the end, he sees Elohim over there. Uh, see how he sees Elohim? And you have an F mm-hmm. under that. Then you got the pattern, you got an E. And then you got a pattern, or you got Elohim again. So he sees Elohim pattern, Elohim creation. You see how they're seeing the same thing? Yes. And then Moses seeing, having an A un- under or he have an A under Elohim there, an F under Elohim on John's side. And in Hebrews 12 and 2, it says, looking unto Yahshua, who's the author and finisher of our faith. Ain't that an A and an F? Right. Then, yeah. then the pattern there has got a B under it on Moses' side and got an E under it, which is the inside of the pattern there. And that's showing he's the, he's the beginning, beginning and the ending. And the ending. And you see over top of the head, they have first and last up there. But then he also has the C, uh, showing that he's the creator. Oh. Uh, he's the creator. And then you got D. I mean, he is realm in the realm or the day of eternity, but he's also the one that's going to destroy it. You understand? And he's the destroyer. And usher it back into the... Uh, spirit creation which we read that earlier uh in the pamphlet that he's going to bring it back to the the real essence of the creation this is a physical one uh uh, but he did the angelic before that and it's going back to the angelic and so that's what he's preparing our minds for transforming our minds uh, you believe in the true gospel and receive in the holy spirit it's the spirit In other words, the spirit made our physical body and gave us physical life, didn't it? Yes. Well, he's the one that's going to transform this body into a a glorified body, and you'll be one of his angels throughout eternity. There's nothing worth missing that over, is it? No. We do not want, you you don't like pain and suffering from a physical standpoint. And you definitely don't want eternal damnation, which is eternal pain and suffering. So it's worth coming and uh, learn about him, isn't it? In other words, he's salvation. He's saving you from the wrath of Yahweh. And Yahshua in you is your only hope of glory. And we didn't have that before we come down here, did we? No. No. Praise Yahshua. We had that egotistical, (laughs) misdirected personality. (laughs) You see that? Yes. Great ha- heavenly anthropomorphic being that he is, he was recognizable as a man, an inco- incorporeal spirit man, Elohim. The wisdom that he imparted now came as if in words uttered by the figure which had appeared out of the blackness or before the creation of the sun. Wow. And then stood in all his glory before us. And our finite minds comprehended his words of wisdom. We were in the realm of, and, and Elohim said, let there be, and there was. It is of this vision and revelation and the wisdom thus imparted to the writer during this experience when the astral man was out of the body that we wish to pass on to other seekers after the truth, after truth. By the intangible divine pattern of the tabernacle, see letter B on the chart, which was the first shown to Moses in 1490 BBY, before the birth of Yahshua, and revealed in this age of the writer. Yahweh Elohim foreknew 
planned in advance each detail of the universe, even to the finite menanderings of the mind of man in search of happiness. By this, and it, by this intangible pattern was the first physical tabernacle built in the wilderness, which symbolically prophesied every major event in the history of the world. From this same pattern, the pattern was evolved. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Dr. Robinson raised her hand. Uh, yes, and, and, and I hope you can help me. Um, I, I'm trying to understand astral, astral man. Who is that? A-S-T-R-A-L. Okay, where is that? Where is that? Down. Astromorphic being. Down. Next paragraph, third sentence. At the end. Oh, thus in fact on the writer during this experience when the astral man was out of the body that we wish to pass on to other seekers after truth. And her question was about the astral man. Okay, astral. Look up what astral mean. Thank you. Astral. Astral. American Heritage Dictionary Astral is outer space. Astral. I have one from the dictionary.com it says astral is a prefix that means star as in astrophysics, celestial body, as in astronomy, or other outer space, as in astronaut. Uh, I have in the Webster's, it talks about um, a visionary, elevated in station or position, exalted. Um, synonyms are bright, distinguished, eminent, illustrious, luminous, noble, notable, noteworthy, outstanding, preeminent, prestigious, redoubtable, signal, star, superior. Okay. So that was some amazing body. The no. astral man out of the body, that's your soul. Right. It's it's just like when we talk about Moses being at the burning bush and Yahshua is in a physical body in Egypt, and he we we call it astral projection. In other words, he gave him a vision uh at the burning bush, showing that showing that he's the angel of Yahweh, revealing unto uh Moses what the name of the heavenly father is and that was the heavenly father in a body so he was speaking to the astral man or the, the soul of a man and and uh yeah, man. and that's your real self so, so that was the true out of body experience huh <laughs> yeah well yeah he catches them up and that's what he's catching up i mean uh, right. you, when you think about Moses being up in the mount 40 days and 40 nights and he didn't eat nothing right uh, you know that there's something going on there because it's hard not to eat and then when he came down he didn't eat nothing I mean you know you read about a lot of stuff in the bible that are right. great mysteries and yeah. it's just showing how that he's caught up in the realm of eternity it's totally focused and uh, but I believe I mean that's pretty much what it, it means there. And you know what? You even We even do it on a small basis. Have you ever had, you're thinking about somebody and you're saying, I should call them. And, and then, then when, the, and when the person calls, you said, I was just thinking about yeah, you. Thinking about you. Right. Yeah, that, that was an astral projection. It's just on a smaller, of course, a smaller level than this. Right. You understand? Yes, that happens. Yeah. 
And wow. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your question. That was a good question, Ms. Robinson. That was, and let me say this. One time I, well, probably many times I was thinking about, I was like, I'm holding a phone, you know, senior citizens moment. I said, now who was, I was, who was, then the phone ring. And I was like, oh, Deb, I was just getting ready to call you. Number one, I couldn't think of who I grabbed the phone to call. Right. And it was the one that called me, which was Deborah. I said, wow, I was just getting ready to call you and I just couldn't think. So that's really something to say that that's a good one. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yes. that happens. Yes. I never knew what that word meant. That's really something. But uh, can I say something? Because um, Frank just brought this up. Uh, that astral projection with um, uh, uh, um, with Moses, with Yahshua, Yahshua in the land of Egypt. Right. When he was, when <clears throat> Moses had had the vision of the name, and um, at the burning bush, at but Joshua truly, Joshua was down in Egypt, and he just projected unto Moses that vision. So, in the day when I came into class, uh, that we that was always talked about astral projection. It's in the it's in the textbook and it is in the pamphlet too. So yeah. And 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 even even um I think in the textbook it mentions about tele telepathic uh something about telepathic. I don't know if that's the same thing, but I guess it's something like it. When I looked at that word, I met, when I heard that word astro, I didn't think of a S T R A L. I, I was looking at it as uh, a he astro A S T R O projected himself. I didn't think about the spelling as two different meanings. So when they say astro, I didn't think of A S T R A L. Just A S T R A L. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Astro, not yeah. astro. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. I didn't know that until today. Praise Joshua. Praise Let's Joshua. Continue. Are we going to continue again tomorrow, Dr. Allen? Of course. Oh, because our time is up. Yeah. I'm just okay. checking. Thank you. Yeah, we well, got page five, starting at the paragraph, it is of this vision and revelation. Where we are and that that was that's pretty amazing yes and i'm glad it happened you you well. wow hey we thank everyone that came out to study with us today we hold classes here wednesday through friday from 10 a.m to 1 I'm sorry, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. My glasses, sorry. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of the Book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, in long glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever, let us all say together, hallelujah. 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 God bless your day. You're you too. Uh, uh, Lucy, yes. uh, Clifford co corrected the Malaysia time the other day from 